Today, we're going to talk about raw food diets for ferrets. We'll look at some of the benefits that this can deliver. We'll clarify some misunderstandings. We'll identify some critical mistakes, which can lead to serious illness and even death. This is one of a two-part series with the other video linked below, focusing on ferret kibble diets. So check out that video as well if you want the full picture. So let's get to it. In the wild, the ferret's ancestor, the polecat, is an obligate carnivore, which means that it can, and does, obtain all of its nutritional requirements from eating animals. There are a number of different polecat species, such as the European, the steppe, the marbled, and the striped, but all tend to survive by eating a variety of different wild animals. This includes mammals, such as rabbits and voles and mice. This includes birds that it may come across. It includes amphibians and reptiles, such as frogs and snakes and lizards. And it also includes invertebrates, such as slugs and worms and beetles and spiders. In captivity, however, the food available for raw feed rarely mirrors that which they have in the wild. Instead, it covers larger animals such as beef and pork, lamb, chicken, duck, turkey, rabbit, that sort of thing. This list of meats is likely to be the mainstay of a raw diet, regardless of whether you're buying commercial ready-mixed minces or whether you're doing a homemade mix. However, many owners, especially those with working ferrets, will have a ready supply of fresh rabbit and pigeon and other game meats from working the countryside. Finally, frozen whole prey animals such as mice, chicks and rats are available from local pet stores. Whilst the foods available to pet owners are not likely to mirror the foods that a ferret would eat in the wild, this is not actually that relevant. Veterinary experts will tell you that ferrets have a requirement for nutrients, not a requirement for ingredients. What this means is that ferrets don't actually absorb the proteins and fats. Instead, they break these down into smaller components, which are amino acids and fatty acids, which are small enough to pass through the intestine wall. Amino acids come from breaking down proteins, and fatty acids come from breaking down fats. Whilst the protein is a very specific compound, unique in its construction and unique to the source from which it was obtained, once broken down into amino acids, there is no difference. So a tryptophan amino acid is just a tryptophan amino acid, regardless of whether it was obtained from a beef steak or a frog's leg. Whilst different types of meat contain different amounts of the different amino acids, there's not a huge variation. So any one meat is unlikely to have a deficiency in any one amino acid to the extent that it would cause a significant health risk. Nevertheless, variation in protein sources serves to reduce the uneven amino acid profile which is why a mix of animal meats serves to improve the overall protein-based nutritional quality. Dietary fat is an important part of a ferret's diet. Not only is fat the ferret's prime energy source, but it also performs a vital role of cell membrane formation, a hormone balance, and allows for the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins some animals eat to meet a calorific need. This is why nutritional experts recommend a protein-to-fat ratio of 2 to 1 with fat forming around 20% of the diet. Similar to protein, ferrets don't have a requirement for fat per se, they have a requirement for fatty acids. Fatty acids can be summarized as saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fatty acids. For optimal growth, ferrets require three essential polyunsaturated fatty acids. Arachidonic acid, which is an omega-6 fat, linoleic acid, also an omega-6 fat, and linolenic acid, which is an omega-3 fat. For a ferret, the actual requirements for these essential fatty acids is relatively unknown. But for mink, the National Research Council recommends a total for the three essential fatty acids of around 0.5% on a dry matter basis. It's not just the totals that are important though, it's the relationship between them. The ratio of linoleic to linolenic acid is key as omega-6 is inflammatory in nature and omega-3 is anti-inflammatory in nature. Again, ideal ratios are not yet scientifically proven for ferrets, but general recommendations seem to be that omega-6 to omega-3 ratio should be in the range of 2 to 1 to 10 to 1. Chicken fat contains around 20% polyunsaturated fatty acids, but this is almost exclusively omega-6. Omega-3 is not present in any significant quantities in meat, so often a diet can only be balanced by the addition of oily fish or by omega-3 supplements. 
Unfortunately, this is not an area where whole prey helps either. Animals bred in captivity for whole prey diets are fed a diet which greatly increases their omega-6 content. This imbalance does not exist in wild prey, as they would eat a more balanced diet, leading to a more balanced omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Whilst ferrets do have a medical requirement for vitamins and minerals, there are no studies which have yet conclusively defined minimum requirements for ferrets. Recommendations are typically based on that which is known for other species. There are many vitamins and minerals, and all play an important part in a healthy body. But most are available relatively naturally and easily within meats, and so we won't focus too much on those in this video. There are three key types though, which can and occasionally do result in significant health implications for ferrets. These being calcium, vitamin A, and vitamin E. Calcium is a vital mineral, necessary not only for bone strength, but also muscle performance and nerve activity. As you would expect, calcium is stored in abundance in the bones, and therefore a wild ferret would get all of its nutritional requirement for calcium from eating wild prey, bones and all. However, very little calcium exists elsewhere in the body, such as the meat and organs. Therefore, unless bone or appropriate supplementation is included within a ferret's diet, it will likely suffer a range of critical health conditions and ultimately death. Unfortunately, we see calcium deficiency in ferrets, and especially in young kids, all too often. It really is an unnecessary level of suffering. People think that feeding a carnivore is simple as giving them meat, but there really is more to it than that. In fact, it's not even enough to consider calcium in isolation. An excess calcium intake can also be problematic. Calcium must be considered in combination with phosphorus. The calcium to phosphorus ratio is usually recommended to be around 1.5 to 1 to 2 to 1 calcium to phosphorus parts. Phosphorus exists widely within meat at around 0.2%. Therefore, the previously mentioned ratios would suggest calcium is required to around 0.3 or 0.4%. This calcium requirement can be obtained naturally from including bone in the diet or via additive supplements. Vitamin A is important for vision, growth, and immune system, amongst other things. Vitamin A is collected and stored primarily in the liver of an animal. Whilst it can be obtained in small quantities in other meats, it is contained in extremely high volumes within the liver. It is therefore important that a ferret has liver as part of its daily diet. As vitamin A is prevalent in liver to such high volumes, only a relatively small part of the diet needs to be liver. In fact, the recommended daily minimum is only 5 international units per gram, again lending from other species recommendations, not from ferret specifically. But this amount is so small that only around half a percent of the diet need to be liver to meet this requirement. But it's not so small that liver is not required. In practice, a much higher percentage is typically used. Without liver, a ferret would develop vitamin A deficiency leading to growth failure, blindness and muscular incoordination. Vitamin E is an important vitamin for the immune system and for optimal blood flow. Vitamin E is also an antioxidant, so one of its other roles is for preventing fatty acids from going rancid. As a result, the higher the fat intake, the higher the vitamin E requirement. The signs of vitamin E deficiency may include muscular degeneration, anorexia, depression, and yellow fat disease. As ferrets typically require a higher fat content than other carnivores, it therefore follows that they also require a higher vitamin E content than other carnivores. Whilst there is no known minimum requirement for ferrets, requirements for other species typically suggest a ratio of 0.6 milligrams of vitamin E for every one gram of polyunsaturated fatty acids. Luckily, chicken is one of the best sources of vitamin E. Now we know what a ferret requires in terms of its nutrition, Let's see how we go about providing this to them in a raw feed diet. Let's first take a look at how whole prey foods stack up in terms of nutritional requirements. Whole prey foods are where the ferret eats the whole animal, from nose to tail, beak to feathers, bones and all. And this is how the ferret in the wild obtains its nutrients. If we look at the nutrients available from various whole prey items available commercially, we can see that the whole prey foods don't vary hugely an average around 65% protein and 21% fat on a dry matter basis. In terms of the vitamins and minerals, there was slightly more variation, 
would all come in above the recommended minimum amounts for other species. And the authors of the study concluded that whole prey does not present as deficient in any particular area of nutrition. Furthermore, in the wild, a ferret would have a varied diet rather than any one specific prey alone. The fact that whole prey foods provide all the nutritional requirements for a ferret is not a surprise. Polecats have evolved to survive on varied whole prey, so it's automatically expected that a whole prey item would provide all the ferret's nutritional requirements. Indeed, it is the analysis of such whole prey items which tends to form the basis of recommendations. The exception, perhaps, is with omega-3 fats. As we covered earlier, with commercially bred whole prey animals, the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is much higher than would be exhibited in the wild. So even those pet owners feeding whole prey animals may still be required to supplement with omega-3. There is a myth which circulates the ferret community occasionally that day-old chicks provide little nutritional content. And as we've seen in the tables previously, this is not true. Uh, day-old chick provides excellent protein and fat content. Nutritional content of whole prey animals varies by age and sex, as well as by the diet that they were fed before they were euthanized and frozen. A study, for example, had shown that mortality in young falcon chicks had been caused by a vitamin E deficiency in the adult birds bred on the farm. As such, variation in whole prey feeds avoids concentrated risk of any one deficiency. Commercial raw food also comes in ready-made, ready-mixed minces. This is where all the ingredients are blended together. These minces are often described as complete or complementary. A complete food is one that will be complete in all nutritional requirements, from protein to fat, from vitamins to minerals, and as such you can feed only this food without further addition or supplementation. Of course, each species has slightly different nutritional requirements, so what is complete for one animal may not be complete for another. On the packaging, it should state what animal the food is considered complete for. A complete food is, in theory, the safest and easiest option, as the pet owner does not need to worry about buying, mixing and calculating all the necessary ingredients and vitamins and minerals. But there are complications. Firstly, it will be rare, or almost non-existent, to find a complete food that is marketed for ferrets. Pet owners will therefore need to assess the nutritional content and calculate whether they think it is appropriate for a ferret, as opposed to the original species intended. We analysed over 20 different commercial raw food diets from eight different companies, and all but one failed to state what the vitamin A and vitamin E content was, and over half failed to state what the calcium and phosphorus content was. It's fairly critical and somewhat pointless to call a product complete without identifying the specific nutritional content. Pet owners will often therefore need to contact the manufacturer directly to identify the specific nutrients. Where the manufacturer cannot or will not provide these nutritional components, you should not buy this product as you have no confidence as to whether it is complete or not. A complementary food is one where the manufacturer has identified that it may be or is deficient in some form or other. It is left for the pet owner to decide and analyse what nutritional requirements may need to be added or supplemented to make this a complete food for their ferrets. Again, to be sure what is necessary to be added or supplemented, you will probably need to contact the manufacturer to identify as many components of that food as possible. You can't get too far in a search for commercial raw food without coming across the term 80-10-10. This means 80% meat, 10% bone, and 10% offal. It is a useful way to quickly characterise the fact that pet minces are more than just meat. But to that extent, it is more of a marketing tool than a scientific requirement. It's not sure where the term originated, but it is likely that the term was coined by reference to the proximate proportions of the body of whole prey animals. Nevertheless, consumers can get hung up on this exact ratio and lead to incorrect opinions on products which do not conform to this very specific 80-10-10 mix. As we discussed earlier, it's important to focus on nutrients and not ingredients. It's important that ferrets obtain sufficient quantities of amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins and minerals. But whilst amino acids are important, if there is going to be a deficiency in a food, it's unlikely to be there. Instead, Deficiencies are more likely to arise in vitamins and minerals and fats. I prefer to think of the 80-10-10 rule not as a set of exact requirements, but more of a set of minimum requirements. For example, the product should be at least 
10% offal, at least 10% bone, and the rest can be meat, which includes fat. We've covered earlier that fat should be at least 20%, and that liver should be around 5% to ensure a good vitamin A and vitamin E content. This could lead to a more accurate phrase than 80-10-10, perhaps being 60-20-10-5-5. That's not very catchy, so perhaps 80-10-10 remains the easier marketing tool. The thing is, offal remains an excellent source of amino acids, so it doesn't have to be limited to 10%. And this is where fundamental concerns from consumers arise. Say if there was a product on the market with a high offal content, meaning it's more of a 60, 30, 10 product, this by no means makes it a poorer product than one with exact 80, 10, 10 content. Pet owners should therefore remain focused on the nutrient profile and not the ingredient profile. Rather than relying on commercial manufacturers, a rapidly growing trend is for pet owners to produce their own homemade raw food diets. The benefits of homemade diets over commercials relates predominantly to control over the ingredients. This can be useful if an owner has a particular desire for certain meat combinations or to isolate certain proteins where there are allergies or intolerances or increase comfort over the storage and processing quality in order to reduce the spread of harmful pathogens. The owner may also be able to provide the diet for a lower overall cost. There will, however, be additional challenges with a homemade diet, such as the consistent availability of desired ingredients, as well as the time, space, and knowledge needed to ensure that the end result meets all the ferret's nutritional requirements. Homemade diets will also enable the pet owner to choose the specific consistency of the diet. Commercial diets will usually be a blend, anything from a fine paste to a coarse mix, but a homemade diet enables the pet owner to introduce larger chunks of meat to the diet. This is particularly good for interest and enrichment within the feeding experience, but is also great for keeping ferret's teeth healthy and clean. On the flip side, larger pieces enable picky ferrets to be selective about what they eat and not necessarily get a rounded diet. Also, the quicker ferrets may steal all the best bits first. If you don't want to do a homemade diet and you can't find a reliable or suitable complete food for a ferret, and you're not comfortable working out and adding the necessary supplements to a ferret's diet, then there is another possibility. There are commercial food options out there which ensure a complete and balanced vitamin and mineral content, not by additive supplements, but by including vegetables in the diet. Now we go into great detail in the topic of vegetable nutrition in the ferret kibble video, so check that out if you're interested. But for the purpose of raw food diets, we can simplify that vegetable content is there simply for the purpose of creating a balanced vitamin and mineral content. The vegetable content will come packed with all the vitamins and minerals that the ferrets will require, but it does bring with it a lot of additional waste by virtue of the undigestible plant matter. This won't be a totally alien concept to a ferret, however, as undigestible plant matter is part of a natural wild diet by virtue of the contents of the whole prey stomachs. And this waste will just go in one end and out the other, and ferrets will obtain some protein and glucose from those contents, just not as much as if it was all meat. Products with vegetables that we've seen with a good complete nutrient balance contain around 80% meat and 20% vegetables. Now so long as the vegetable content doesn't go too much higher, then I see no reason why this cannot remain on the list of options to choose when considering what works best for you. Ultimately, in this case, pet owners would be assessing whether their concerns over the vitamin and mineral content of pure meat products is sufficient to move them to a product which contains vegetables that provides a guaranteed balance of vitamin and mineral. Whilst raw food can provide everything a ferret requires and is the natural choice, it's not without its downsides. We've discussed earlier that carnivores don't just require meat. They require a balanced diet of meat, fat, vitamins, and minerals. A raw diet which doesn't carefully consider each of those components can very easily result in a very sick and unhealthy ferret. And unfortunately, with the rise in popularity of both ferrets as pets and raw food diets, we are increasingly seeing more of these deficiency-based illnesses. 
raw food diets are susceptible to pathogen outbreaks within the food. This is due to poor processing and storage of the food at some point in the process between the slaughterhouse and the pet bowl. Government bodies and vet associations tend to focus on the risk to human health of these pathogens, but this isn't really the main focus for me. We're all used to the preparation of raw meats for our human diets, so this is not too much different in terms of hygiene and washing hands and equipment. Instead, for me, the real story here is the risk to the ferrets which eat the food. Many of the pathogens are anaerobic, which means they thrive in the absence of oxygen. This means that the vacuum sealed packs of commercial food are excellent places for these pathogens to thrive and multiply. Whilst freezing this food puts those bacteria into hibernation, it doesn't kill them and as soon as you start to thaw, they will come back to multiplying and breeding again. With botulism, it's not the bacteria themselves that are the problem, rather botulism is a toxin that those bacteria produce. So even if you killed off all of the bacteria, that toxin would still remain in the food. Unfortunately, outbreaks of deadly food poisoning within the ferret community are not as rare as we would hope. This is one of the drivers of the move to homemade diets, as pet owners have greater control over the prepare, freeze, thaw process and therefore have greater confidence over the prevention of outbreaks. Dental calculus or plaque will build up on a ferret's teeth with any food type. The only way it is kept under control is by the physical action of abrasion. In the wild, the action of chewing up whole prey will act to scrub away plaque and hence prevent calculus buildup. This action does not exist if a ferret eats only blended raw food products. For that reason, unblended products should be a regular part of a ferret's diet such as larger meat chunks or on-the-bone products like poultry wings and necks. A big downside of raw food diets is flies. Now this might not be as much of a problem for pets kept indoors, but for outdoor ferrets this is a big issue, particularly in the summer months when a bowl of raw food outside can be covered in fly eggs within minutes. For this reason, outdoor ferret pet owners often feed their meat after dark when fly activity is low. And this leads us to our final point. In the wild, ferrets would eat multiple meals, 8 to 10 meals a day. This optimal way of feeding can be ensured by a permanent supply of dry food kibble, but with raw food diets, this is not easy. Owners feeding raw food diets would typically feed only twice a day. This can be of greater significance when you have groups of ferrets with different eating habits. Those greedy ones would happily gorge themselves on a large meal all in one go, leaving those who prefer to nibble away over a long period with a short ration. So what's the takeaway here? The aim of this video is not to tell you exactly what to feed, but rather to tell you how to identify a full and balanced complete diet for a ferret, and so you can make your own informed choices given the availability of products in your area. The key statement, of course, is that ferrets require nutrients and not ingredients. Sure, ferrets are carnivores and they eat meat, but it's not as simple as that. In fact, it's quite easy for a well-meaning but uninformed pet owner to feed their ferrets a deficient meat diet and as a result cause serious health issues. If buying commercial, don't just assume that it's adequate and complete. Check all of the nutritional contents and if necessary, contact the manufacturer for any omissions. If going the homemade route, ensure that you are covering all of the bases. There are a large number of resources out there on the internet giving recipe ideas for complete diets for ferrets. Good luck. Thanks for watching. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe and try out some of our other videos.